All right, I don't know if I've done this before, but I have a, um, I think I did one early on. I think I did, it's an iPad 7th generation. I did one early on where I just replaced the nub, the nub on it because we didn't have any, um, new charge ports, but, uh, Mobile Centrix has all these charge ports in stock now, so we don't have to just replace the nub. Um, we replaced the whole thing. Um, and you know what? It's exactly the same as the 5th generation, 6th generation, and, um, iPad Air. Air 2. They're all relatively the same repair. Um, the greatest thing is this TriStar tester, and I've mentioned it before in other videos, but it's about 140 bucks. You really want one of these things because uh, the greatest thing about it is that you can plug this sucker in, test it without having to remove the screen. You know, this is like, I mean, if you're, if you want to take on iPad repairs, you have to get one of these things. I mean, God, um, yeah, it saves so much time and money, and, um, yeah, so, plug it in, push the button, and it tests, if it, if, if it's a charge port problem, then it'll say, hey, like, oh, your charge port is bad, or it'll say failed immediately, within, like, 10 seconds. If it's a charging chip problem, usually, it'll say, PP5E0, passed, everything else is failed, which is gonna say on this one, okay? So, um, I guess I'll just kind of go through the... I'll just go through this, whatever. <laughs> At some point, I'm going to get a better setup here. My, my setup is nubs. Oh, look, it's missing a damn screw. And another thing that I've also been doing while we're waiting for this thing, uh, I'm only doing it just to show this video, but I've also been putting um, fingernail polish on these screws right here. These screws... And then these screws right here, and just the hope that it doesn't back out as easily. Fingernail polish acts as a little bit of, of an adhesive. You can you can try whatever you want, but fingernail polish seems like it's strong. It's just strong enough where you know you can actually remove it if you really wanted to. Um, and you know, whereas super glue, like you try to remove that thing, it'd be kind of hard to do it. So I just put a little dabble of uh, fingernail polish on it, and just hopes that, just in hopes that these screws don't back out, which they which they do often, which makes this port loose and then and ends up breaking it, you know. Um, you know, as someone repairing these things, uh, it's probably better that you don't do that so that, you can, so that customer comes back and fixes it, but, you know, we're here to make these devices last for as long as we can. We're not here to, like, uh, to fix it in hopes that the customer will come back, right? So, anyways, um... Uh, in, a, in another video, I was talking about the TriStar Tester versus the ICC Pro unit, this thing right here. And um, I will say that this thing is slow as a mother effer. <laughs> the TriStar, I mean, I prefer this one, but um, it's slow as hell, man. Even the quick test is slow as hell. So, uh, that's the downside, but overall, it's still more reliable, and it doesn't turn off. So it says fail, click on more. Um, you, you can't really see it, but it says PP5E0 has passed, everything else has failed. This is classic, um, TriStar problem. So we're going to go ahead and replace TriStar on this iPad 7th generation. And this, the chip that it uses is the 610A3B, which is found on the iPhone 7 series and above. Um, so it's really nothing special here. Just another charging chip up here. So call me lazy, uh, or efficient, uh, whatever you want to call me, doesn't matter, but I leave, I always do these inside of the, oh, another thing I want to show you is, this is how I isolate my, the battery connector, because battery connectors seem like a <laughs> big problem with some people, uh, mainly because some of these newer iPads, they have this, like, groove on the, on the battery connector, and where you, if you slide, you know, we were kind of taught to pop something underneath of it, plastic tool, but... There's some teeth under here that if you jab it under here, it's going to break the actual connector. So I always do this now, all right? These are these are like the, the metal spiders, and I just put one on each side and just lift up fairly hard. Um, so let's see. So with these right here, I always, well, I've been, I've just been doing it inside the housing. So just because I'm lazy as a mother. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is this right here. This, this, this is going to burn just a little bit, but... I don't know, whatever. I mean, 
we're working on the logic board. Things are going to burn a little bit, so. So anyways, I'm going to just put, I'm going to try to slide this cap on. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get another metal spudger, and I'm going to pry it up a little bit. See, they, they glue these suckers on so tight, man. It's really, I don't know why they do this, actually, but they really do glue it on like a mother. So just kind of be careful a little bit. So I'm going to just pry it up a little bit, and then I, I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to put this here, and uh, I'm actually going to put this metal spudger <clears throat> to the left of it so that the heat kind of gets on this a little bit more than all this plastic here. And then I'm just going to tape all the way around it. Because this is where the TriStar is. Um, so I'm just going to go all the way around it, and then what I do is before I was using these Hacko um, snips right here, these little mini snips, but I got these I got these metal ones now, which work way much better at uh, at bringing this this uh, metal up right here. So here's what I do. I normally just go like this, just like that, and then I'll do the same on this side, just so that I can access the chip. Yeah, you don't want to damage too much because we're just going to kind of fold it back after we're done with this. Hopefully fold it back. Okay, so if you look closely, this is a 610A3B. 610A3B charging chip. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see. Nothing special. Well, I guess you can't really see it that well, but... Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Okay. Anyways, just note that the dot is on the top left here, uh, based on disorientation, I guess. Well, I guess bottom left, uh, if you're anal. Okay, so turn on my... I stopped using the... My, um... Hey Google... Turn on whatever smoke absorber thing, because it, it got really annoying. <laughs> see that? You hear that? It says Google says he, they do, he, she does not know how to help with that. So it, it kept doing that. So I just stopped it and I went straight up manual now. I just have a button here which I flip in order to turn on my smoke absorber. But I do use Google to turn on everything else though, which works wonders because uh, um, oftentimes I'm working on something and I just say, "Hey Google, turn on the fan," and it'll turn on the fan for me. Okay, so my smoke absorber is on. Uh, my quick station, I'm going to set, I'm actually going to set it to a little bit hotter than, I'm going to go to 450 and let's say 36, all right, just because when it's in the case like this, um, usually it takes a little bit hot, a little bit more heat to get up because um, the frame actually acts as a, as a heat sink, so, so I'm going to see if I can try to get in and get out here. Uh, but I'm gonna have to use a little bit more heat, unfortunately. Get in, get out. There you go. See, that didn't take very long, did it? No. So just chuck that old one, old chip away. And I like to, um, I like to get these old, the old solder off when it's still hot. I mean, that's, I don't know if. You've experimented, but if you wait for the sucker to get cold, it's going to be a lot harder to get it off. Okay, that's that's a pro tip for you right there. This is this applies to to every every repair that you do. Okay, don't wait for it to get cold before you. Oh, see, I might have messed it up already. All right. So, anyways, don't wait for it to get cold before you um. Get rid of these solder bowls. Okay. Alright, that should be pretty good. Okay, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm not even going to clean it up, actually. Let's if I can get it more in focus, though. I definitely need to up, up my game a little, my camera game a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to get my 610A3B chip. <clears throat> 
610A3B. Oh, and then. Let's see. I'm going to dabble just a little bit more of solder, or, uh, solder flux on it. And I am using Amtec VS213 TFA as my flux of choice. So, not a whole lot to this. Uh, put it back the same way that we got it on. Just make sure it's aligned. So you don't have to want to do this twice. Definitely don't want to have to do it twice. As soon as you see it squiggle, we're pretty much good to go. Go. Okay. So basically, as soon as you see it squiggle, just wait for another second or two, and then you're good to go. Okay. So let's see. Just wait. Definitely wait for it to cool down a little bit, so that you know sometimes you're you're a little too fast. Pick it up, and then the chip moves. So just wait an extra second or two. Then start removing all the cap on. See, if you look at if you look at it, it's, it's really not that horrible. I mean, like, look, it doesn't even look that burnt. See it? That's not bad. Not bad. You, you, I mean, that was right next to it, and it didn't even burn. So, so okay. First thing I'm gonna do is um, let's do this. Okay, so let's let's go back to the big camera here. So this is what I mean by two metal splitters on each side of the battery connector, okay? Um, so I'm going to take these metal splitters off. I'm going to get my tri-star tester, turn off my fan here, my smoke absorber. Plug it back in. I, I don't really need to hold the battery down since I'm doing a quick test, but I just want to make sure it doesn't say failed anymore. If it doesn't say failed, then we are good to go. So basically I'm just going to, I mean... I've done so many of these now that I don't really have to worry too much about uh, doing messing up or anything like that, you know, because these are relatively low risk, so are charge ports. And sometimes I don't even test them, but uh, I mean, for, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that, but it is true that sometimes I do not test them at all. I mean, so long as, so long as they're like pulling two amps on the USB ammeter, then I'm pretty confident that it's uh, it's good to go. Okay, so now it says passed. See that? See that? Now it says passed. So we are in good shape now. Um. Anyway, so let's do this. I'm gonna see if I can find a screw for this right here. Put that screw back for this guy. Put that. Put the uh, paint on it. And what I do with this is that I just kind of like, kind of go like this with it. Let's let's isolate this before I jack some up. And then I just kind of go like this. Just kind of go like this with it. And just kind of just make sure it doesn't short with any component down there. Kind of like this. Bend it inwards. And then that's pretty much... Should be fairly good. Like, that's, that's not bad. So let me just take a look at it under a scope here. That yeah, should be good. So I go like that. And then I just pop this sucker back. And it looks pretty much like brand new. Look at that. Brand new. See that? Can't even tell, man. Um, so, let's see. Next thing I'll do is take this out, plug into the charger. See if it pulls 2 amps or not. And it's pulling 2.4 amps. You can't see it, but you have to you have to believe me on that, all right? So it's pulling 2.4 amps. It's we're good to go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close this up and call it a day. And so this is the iPad seventh generation um, charging chip repair. Um, that's it. Simple. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We make these videos to help you guys learn how to do micro soldering um, for normal repairs. Um, I want to take this time to promote our online course here. We created an online course hosted at Udemy.com. 
Um, if you go directly to Udemy, it's 150 bucks. If you go through microsoldering.com, click on store shop, and then click on this first uh, product right here, there's a coupon code that uh, gives you $50 off of our online course. So our online course, it was created by Tom and myself. Um, it contains four and a half to five hours of online video instruction. Um, it'll teach you everything that you need to know to get started with micro soldering. So basically, we um, we start with the basics, you know, just the component level, um, how to use ZXW tools, um, what kind of how to set up your tools, what kind of tools you need, um, how to set up your hot air rework stations, um, use your micro pencil and tweezers and DC power supply and all that stuff. And then we go into actual repairs. So the four most common problems are no backlight, no touch, no charge, and loop disease. And with the newer versions of the iPhones, um, we also have a section on uh, logic board separation because with the 10 and up, uh, the logic boards come in two pieces. So we also have a section on how to separate them and put them back together. And then our last section is um, all about data recovery. So this is, it's it's four and a half hours of just good stuff just to help you get started, okay? And with the way that cell phone repair is going these days, I think it's um, essential to learn how to do micro soldering for your business. Um, if you're interested, like I said, just go to the website here, microsoldering.com, and click on uh, store shop, and then click on this right here, and you'll get $50 off. So thank you for watching our channel, and hopefully you'll enjoy the course. Thank you.